Thank you. Thank you. I think I'm unmuted. Yes. Well, with that peaceful vibration, I feel we could stay there for another couple of minutes. Thank you, Jeanette. It's been a, a big week for you and um, so good for you to step in the breach today. Reverend Phyllis couldn't be here. She's had computer problems, as I mentioned earlier. So I'll uh, do the talk for us today and different titles. It's not a very imaginative title. It's just called Imagination. I'm sure I could have done better, but um, under the circumstances, here goes. So we know that the power of the month has been imagination. It's that faculty by which we form a mental image or a combination of ideas. It's where we see things that haven't been created before. And it's the creative power of the universe expressing through us. And we know there's only one power in the universe and we are individual expressions of it. We didn't invent the power, but we can use that power. Hopefully in line with original thinking, infinite intelligence and wisdom. Because whatever we think, if we think of it strong enough and feel it, it can come into expression. So we have to be very, very careful sometimes because what a responsibility we've got that if we think on something long enough, there it appears may not be straight away. That's where the funny bit is. You think, oh good, I'm not thinking about that now, but seeds have been sown. Albert Einstein of all people, when I wasn't expecting to see this uh, quote, but I found it. My library angel was very good for me this week. When I examine myself and my methods of thought, I come to the conclusion that the gift of fantasy has meant more to me than my talent of absorbing positive knowledge. Wow. And when you see some of the photographs of Albert Einstein, he had certainly had a playful side. And uh, I've seen quite a few photographs of him there in Hollywood uh, with Charlie Chaplin and a few others. And, um, you know, he, ha he was quite a character, apart from th that super genius that he was. Ability to reason has often been his main part. Uh, we've grown to be to realize what we are. It's given us the power to see and to be and to change. However, it's only when imagination is joined with the will, with good judgment as to the works and works and worth of it, that it can help us. And as things most of us know, they create a chain of events. So what are we creating? I looked through some of the, the notes I had and I thought, my goodness, imagination in music. Now, when I did my music course, you know, I was quite surprised. We look at the modern symphony orchestra and see the instruments that it's got there, violins, strings, woodwork, and, uh, woodwinds and percussions. But where did it all start? We can look at, look at the, the beautiful flute sound, the woodwind. And there's one theory is that uh, very early days, when it was windy and raining, the reeds would, the wind would blow through the, the reeds down by the ponds and the pools and the lakes, and people were scared because they thought that it was God being angry with them. Well, this happened for some time. Obviously, some very strong person decided to go and confront it and realise that it was the wind blowing through the reeds. Then someone else came along and thought, oh, this is making a different sound. And gradually they put them together. And we had the, one of the first organs, which is a wind instrument. And most of the big pipe organs, they had someone pumping air into them, all from that original, original sound of the flute. 
and the same with the other instruments as well. So, we're ever forming and creating, first in the mind, then the idea in the mind, then the materialization of that idea. If we are cold, we seek to be warm. So we discovered the use of fire. We found weapons to protect ourselves from wild animals and aggressive situations. And all of the wonderful discoveries that have been made are blessing the world today. Now first conceived in the imagination of someone's mind. We also see destructive things that have been created. We're here for spiritual growth and on this blessed journey we are given free will to do what we want to do, to imagine what we want and to create what we want. But if it's not in line with the original creative thinking, we suffer the consequences of our action. It's not a stern God punishing us. It's just the output and working of natural spiritual law. It is our own misuse of the law which really is punishing us. So what seeds again are we sowing in our mind? When you look back over the last 40 years, there's been some weird movies that we've all sat through, like great giant tsunamis and war films and all that sort of stuff. Just imagine that going all around the earth. And it's almost like we're reliving that, aren't we? We've created something and at our time of life we can look around and think, my goodness, look at the world now. Look back at some I remember seeing some film where this big tidal wave comes across a city. It was so real. And yet I have seen that happen over the last 10 years. So, we need to create in a way that's going to be good for us all. In the early days of New Thought, it was mainly about healing, and getting rich and abundance. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing at all wrong with that. But I think we've re reached a time where it's not just about me individually or ourselves individually, it's about everyone. Because we're in a situation now where one goes, we all go, so to speak. So looking back, there's a book called The Science of Getting Rich by Wallace D. Wattles, and he writes, what tends to do away with poverty is not the getting of pictures of poverty in your mind, but, but putting the pictures of wealth into the minds of the poor. And round about that time that book was written, there were three books written just about the same time. Charles Fillmore, in, who was born in 1854, Wattles was born in 1860, and Napoleon Hill, who wrote Think and Grow Rich, was born in 1883. And so from the writings of Wattles again, there is a thinking stuff or a substance which all things are made, in which there is and permeates, fills the interspaces of the universe. And here's a vital thing. A thought in this substance produces a thing that is imagined. We can form things in our thoughts and by impressing our thoughts upon this formless substance we can cause the thing we think about to be created. We can read that over and over and over again as, as I certainly have and I realize that it's not always at once that you say something or think something, that it happens. We have to think it, feel it and believe it. So in denials and affirmations are great ways to get started on this, but we have to believe them, feel them and imagine what we want in our lives now and act accordingly. Sometimes we can't be bothered. 
we just think, oh, look, I'd just rather sit down and just enjoy life. Well, you can enjoy the moment, but thinking isn't always that easy. So how do we get our imagination to work? Well, I've read about certain writers that have had what they call writer's block, which can last for weeks, for months. Sometimes, you know, I sit down and think I'll write a poem. I don't think of anything. Get in bed at night, I think it's wonderful, but I don't have a pencil at hand, so I think. So how do we get in the mood? Well, in my studies, I found Beethoven went for long walks in nature. And from that, his mind would be at ease and he'd hear beautiful sounds that possibly we couldn't ever hear. Same with Mozart. He used to, of all things, play billiards. That relaxed his mind. There are many artificial ways of stimulating the mind, but these also have an effect on the body as we know from uh, certain writers that have just caved into these experiences. But um, Somerset Maughan, who used to write some wonderful novels, I've got most of them here, he had a routine. Regardless of what life was like on the French Riviera, he would sit at his desk for three hours every morning and write regardless of what came out. And as he looked back over his work, he could see that yes, there were the seeds of something he could develop. Then he let it go, he let the work go and went down to join his friends. And Margaret Schofield, my last music teacher, she used to say uh, if she had a recital at the ABC, uh, she had to rehearse and learn and she'd come back from teaching at the conservatorium very tired and she'd have to sit at the piano in a cold room till it warmed up and learn this next accompaniment she had to perform for some singer or musician. And she said, all you do, he said, you just start playing, cold playing. And then gradually you get into the mood of it. And she said, I could have stayed there for another couple of hours. I've had to do that myself sometimes in the past. Thank goodness I don't have to now. Um, it can be quite wearing and tearing. Jung talks about provoking fantasies and letting our mind flow. And it's interesting what comes up from the depths of the mind. We have a gentleman up here I've got to know who used to be one of the producers for The Sullivans. I don't know if any of you remember that show. Uh, he's quite a creative, he runs a, a play group here and he keeps on wanting me to join them. It's on a Wednesday night and to be honest, I said, I'm sorry, I can't commit to that. Anyway, we, we quite often have a glass of wine and we started on things like limericks. Someone says a line, then the next person has to come up with the next line. I'm afraid we had to stop it after a while. It was all getting a little bit naughty. So um, we, we changed the subject. But isn't it a great way? I remember being in a hall one day. I, think, I don't think it was at Unity in Melbourne. But the speaker said, we're going to use our imagination. So he'd point to someone in the audience and say, now, on the farm, there lived an old man. And the next person had to say the next line, the next line, and the next line. And we all tried to make it harder for each one. It really wasn't fair. But we were in fits of laughter with some of the things and the turns and twists it takes. Imagination is there. It's there. When I first came up here into the country, I've got a, a paddock that slopes down. And it's a natural amphitheatre. And there's a dam at the bottom of it. And I thought, ah, I could have concerts. I could have classical music concerts, bring a piano on the back of the truck, put it down there, people can sit and have their lunch, 
in a beautiful setting because the Anglican Church is overlooking permits, it's a waste of to go through. So sometimes imagination uh, can be stifled very easily, but the thing is not to give up. I obviously didn't want to do strongly enough. I still think now it'd be nice, but um, thing could happen. On with imagination. Everything that was manifested was first a mental picture and was brought into expression by the forming power of our minds. So we look around and we can see some of the wonderful things. What we need now, I feel, is for us all to collectively use our imagination for the upkeep and, and the upliftment of the piano. And as Wattle says, uh, you know, getting that information about how we can use our truth principles to create a healthy and abundant and peaceful life, not only for ourselves, but for all of us. And as we look around, we can see how some people have benefited from these particular teachings. Florence Chauvel Shin was a big one for a lot of us. And her affirmations still ring in my mind. Catherine Ponder. Then, of course, when it really hit the big time, I suppose, was with Louise Hay, who had her little book. We've all seen that little book with the affirmations in it, and we've used them. And as she said herself, uh, people use them and she put them out there. She was a science of mind practitioner, which is the same sort of thing as New Thought. And um, she found that people were getting back to her with great results. Then sometimes I'd say, look, I've used yours, uh, some of these talks, but they don't work. And there comes a time when there's a little bit more involved. We might be lucky where we get a, as, as she said, there might be a car space waiting for you. You might win uh, something at a raffle, which I did last week. And, um, you know, then she said, all of a sudden, it stops. And that's part of the new thought thing. We have to do more. We have to keep on keeping on. And also, we have to listen to what our higher self wants. And if we work and listen for our higher self, we will feel that inspiration and things will start forming and happening in our life. So different things happen in our lives. Things we imagined when we were young, we really have outgrown them. And we've had an interesting time. I've been thinking of St. Francis for some reason. And we had the serenity prayer a couple of weeks ago. Then I came across another one, the Canticle of the Sun. In that, St. Francis uses his imagination and calls it Brother Sun, Sister Moon, Brother Water, and he puts names and personifies the wonderful gifts that we've got around us in nature. And that helps the imagination. I use words like this pristine planet. And I give thanks for the wonderful fresh air up here that is really just invigorating. And I do stand out the back and I say the power of the universe, the healing power of the universe is flowing through me now. It might be the middle of winter, but the sun is shining and I feel that energy flowing through me. Some days easier than others, but I stay there until I feel it. And I've, it's having a good effect on me at the moment, I feel anyway. So he's used that. Then I went further. I found that verse of Ecclesiastes. To everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under heaven. Well, that's all right when we're young. We think, OK, I'm never going to get old. This is great. Worry about all that stuff later. I remember a friend of mine, Graham, when we were checking the spiritual scene out in Melbourne in our early 20s, we went to a church, the Spiritualist Church, and there was a minister there ahead of his time, Reverend Gordon Cowie. And 
my friend and I, we weren't into New Thought, really. And I remember Gordon Cowie saying, OK, as we get older, we want to keep fit. One way to, is to use your imagination and affirmations. Now, in a spiritualist church, this was big stuff. And anyway, so here's this elderly gentleman on the platform, and he got us all to sing to the tune of Walsing Matilda, my cells are renewing, my cells are renewing, my cells are renewing. And I'm afraid in our youthful uh, attitude, we couldn't stop laughing, and we were rolling on the floor laughing. It was so embarrassing, but we couldn't stop. But everyone laughed with us. And I went up to uh, Reverend Cowie afterwards. I said, look, I'm very sorry. That it was just, and he said, that was a healing for you. And I think it was, it was a release. Anyway, I spoke to my friend uh, Graham uh, last week. It was his birthday. He's now 70. And I reminded him, I said, you better start taking that song seriously, Graham. My cells are renewing, my cells are renewing. And it brought back the same laughter. But imagination is amazing. It really is. And I see most of us here, we're youthful. We don't feel any different. We might look a little bit different. But there again, the seasons of them here. Um, now I think, what will I do with them? There's got to be some person, some younger person that I can sort of help out and give them to or something. Not all of them. I'm still a bit weak for some of them. But someone and some of the things I look around, yeah, a younger person could like these and they'd probably, probably need it. I was amazed when I said to someone, would you like some music? And they said, oh, look, we don't have to worry about that. We just download it. And I thought, well... Yeah, we are. That's why there's so many books and things around, I suppose. People can just instantly get what they want. It's amazing. So, to sum up, I'm raving on a bit, but it's an interesting topic. And I'm quite wonderful and would be in fits of laughter, I think, by the end of it. But anyway, a gentle warning. In shaping this substance with our imagination, it is important to realise that this substance will do as it's asked, if asked clearly, persistently, and with feeling and gratitude. But it is also a law. It will give us what we want, but as co-creators, we take the consequences of our creation. God doesn't punish us if things don't work out. Yeah. It's our misuse of the law that brings its own sufferings. Let's spread this good news that abundance is ever available through imagination and hard work. It is true. Thank you, Bev. Uh, unless we shape the, have the basics in life, we are not only motivated to explore our spiritual nature, we're only concerned with our survival of day to day, which is not a way to live. In looking back over my life, as I said, I reflect on many things that I wanted at certain stages in my life, and they no longer interest me. I have other interests that have been manifested. Experience teaches us how to work in line with universal spiritual law, demonstrating not only abundance on the physical plane, which we eventually leave, but also an abundance of spiritual awareness of that part of us which does not perish. Yet it adds to our expansion of consciousness of our soul's body throughout eternity. So let's keep up storing up those treasures in heaven. And so it is. Thank you.